Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to graph this type of function. Okay, so we have f of x equals to six times cosecant of pi over three times x plus pi. So the way to plot this is to actually um, plot the sine function of this, because we know, remember, recall that cosecant is just one over sine. Okay, so the idea would be to plot the sine function, and then from there, it's rather are relatively easy to come up with the, uh, the graph, okay? So we're gonna do this by, by identifying first, what is the, the period, right? And what is the phase shift, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and start with that. Okay. All right, um, so let's start with the period. So remember, for the period, the, the period for sine and cosine is, is two pi, okay? That's one cycle, right? One revolution, okay? So in this case, it's the same idea here, okay? So the same, we have this form. So the period is gonna be two pi, right? Divided by whatever's in front of X, okay? Okay, so simplifying this, this is just, basically this is just two pi, times, right, pi times three, three over pi. And so then we can see that the pi's cancel out well, and this gives us six, okay? All right, so that's the period for, um, that we're gonna use for our sketch. All right, the next thing is to determine the phase shift. Again, to get the phase shift for something like this, you're going to take this value and divide it by whatever's in front of x. Okay, so it's going to be pi divided by pi over three. Okay. Simplifying this, okay, we get pi over one times three over pi, and that gives us three. Okay. All right. So. All right, so remember that the, the phase shift, that's going to be our starting point, okay? And then we wanna go, right? We wanna add that, we wanna take this and add it to the period and that will give us our ending point, okay? So, all right, so this is our starting point, but keep in mind here, right, something else to keep in mind is that because there's a plus here, Remember, so if it's positive, that means it's gonna shift, right? The original function of this is gonna to shift to the left, okay? All right. If that was minus, it's gonna to shift to the right, okay? Another way to see that is you can actually look at this part, okay? I'm gonna go over here for a moment, okay? So we, if we factor out pi over three, then that gives us, okay? So we can take out pi over three, and then that will leave us with X plus three here. All right, so when you, right, so if you distribute this, you get pi over three times X, pi over three times three will give you pi, okay? And then this, right, this is the same as X minus negative three. So this is another way that you could possibly determine the, the, the phase shift is by writing it in this form, um, but remember that you try, you know you try to factor out whatever's in front of x here, and then you get this form, and then write it like this. Okay, so this tells you that you're shifting right three units to the left. Okay, all right. So just kind of be careful of that. You, you know when you when you first look at these, okay, look what's going on here, and then we do get three here. But remember we're shifting it to the left. So so our starting point is actually going to be minus. Go ahead and write that here. So that's our starting point, okay? Our ending point, okay? Our ending point is going to be this value plus the period, okay? Because that's, think of it, that's the length that we are focusing on for this function. Okay, so it's gonna be minus three plus six, which is obviously gonna be three. All right. So that basically provides us with the interval there, right? So we want to, right? So our points are going to go from minus three up to three, 
Okay. And so now we need to figure out what that delta x value is, right? We need to figure out the spacing between each of the each of these uh, x values. Okay. So that is going to be again. I'm going to use this term delta x. Okay. So that's just basically the the ending point minus the starting point divided by five. Actually, sorry, divide by four. Okay. So that's going to give us, so we're dividing by four. So that's going to give us um, five, um, basically five, five points, okay? With, right, with four spaces. All right, so any point, so our ending point is three, okay, minus our starting point divided by four. All right, so we end up getting six fourths, which is going to be three halves. So we go ahead and simplify that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's go ahead and um, draw our, our plot our points on here. So there's my there's my number line. Okay, our starting point was minus three. Ending point was three. Okay. So notice that gives us right, that's right, a length of three minus negative three, which is six. Okay. Right. And our delta x is three halves. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with minus three. Okay. Minus three plus three halves gives us minus three halves. Minus three halves plus three halves. Obviously, that gives us zero. And then zero plus three halves, that gives us three halves. And then three halves plus three halves, that gives us six halves, which is three. Okay. So there's our there's our reference points that we want to use. Okay. Right. Notice we have right, five of them. Okay. And four, right? So five, five points and four intervals. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to do the computations here. Okay, so again, what we're going to do is we're going to take each of those, take each of these points and plug them into our function. Okay, the function that we're going to graph first is going to be the sine function. And then from there, once you understand, once we get, once we establish this, the curve for sine, then all we have to do is take kind of the reciprocal of those values. And that will give us the cosecant, right? That will give us the graph of our original function. Okay, all right. So, Again, so I'm using, we're using this function in the meantime, okay? Because this is cosecant, so we're using it, we'll take, right, using the reciprocal. Okay, so again, this is what we're using. We're gonna get the, we're gonna get the values for, from here. And then from there, we can come up with the sketch for this function, okay? All right, so let's see. So the first one, okay, for, let's see, for negative three. Okay, we have six times sine pi over three, negative times negative three plus pi. Okay. And that's going to give us six times sine. So this is going to give us zero here. Okay, so the threes cancel out. That gives us minus pi plus pi, which is zero. Okay. And then that gives us zero. Okay. All right, next one for x equals to minus three halves. Okay, we have six times sine of pi over three times minus three halves plus pi. Okay, again, so we're gonna get right here, we end up getting minus pi over two, okay, plus pi. So minus pi over two plus pi, that's gonna give us one half pi or pi over two, okay? 
So sine pi over two, right? Remember that is going to be one. Okay, so this is one. Okay, this is all one. And then we get multiplied by six. Okay. All right. All right. So we can kind of see what's going on here, right? You can, in fact, you can you can easily predict what the next number is just be based on the fact that sine is um, sinusoidal. Okay. All right. And so the next one should be right. So you're going. You're going up by you're going up to six, and then you should come back down to zero. Okay. All right. So, but let's let's check. So just evaluating this function, okay, at zero. So we end up getting zero here plus pi. Okay. So sine pi. Sine pi is zero, so zero times six is going to be zero. Okay? So as we predicted, it should right, we get zero. Okay? The next one is for three halves. Again, replacing x with three halves here, we get six times sine. Is this going to give us pi over two? plus pi, so that gives us six times sine of three pi over two. Sine three pi over two, remember, so pi over two is up, right? It's 90 degrees, three pi over two is gonna be 270 degrees. So that's gonna be minus one. So we end up getting six times minus one, which is minus six. And then finally, for the last one, Okay, we get pi over three times three plus pi. Okay, and then this is the threes cancel out here. That's gonna leave us with two pi. And sine two pi is the same thing as sine of zero, right? Which is gonna be zero. So this is gonna be zero. Zero times six is zero. Okay, so those are the, right? uh, those are your, I'll put values. Okay. Again, you can you can kind of check your result here, right? Because it's starting at right. We got zero, and it's going back up, going back down to zero, and then it's continuing. Right? It's going to go down to minus six, and then come back up because of that sinusoidal pattern. Okay. So now we have we have all our data points, right? So now we just need to go ahead and plot them. And then from there, we can get the graph for cosec. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this part. Okay, so let's put the plot here. All right, so we have, okay, we're starting with minus three. Okay, those are the x values, minus three and minus three halves, zero, three halves and three. Okay. So I'm gonna plot the sine function in blue and then for cosecant, I'll plot it in a different color here. Okay, so we have, for minus three, we have zero. Minus three halves, it was six. So let's call this six. And down here is minus six units. And then we're back to zero, right? So at zero, it was zero. At three halves, it was minus six. And then three, finally, at three, it's back to zero. So just a... So something like that, okay? So we can clean this up a little bit more. Try to make it a little bit more rounded there. Okay. All right, so that's good enough. 
that gives us an idea of what's going on. Okay. So remember that, again, remember that cosecant is one over sine of x. So this tells us that basically the cosecant function, right? If you look at the graph, it's going to be undefined, right? It, it's basically going to be undefined at the values that make this zero. Okay. So if you think about that with what we have, so this is the graph of sine. Okay. And because cosecant is one over sine, that means at these points, okay, this point here, this point here, and this point are going to be vertical asymptotes for this because these are all these are these are the roots for the function for this function. Okay. So when you take the reciprocal, you get right. So you're going to get these are going to be in the denominator. All right, and so you, we can't divide by zero. So these turn out to be vertical asymptotes. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and plot those here. So that's where I'm gonna indicate those. Okay. All right. So there's our vertical asymptotes. Okay. Now all we have to do is just we have everything here to come up with the um, come up with the sketch for cosecant for this function. Okay, so right here, so this part right here, okay, we're going to, we're going to, um, so basically you get, if you think about this, right, you take the reciprocal, okay, you're going to get, right, you're going to get that same point back here. So our graph is going to look like this. Okay. So if you put in, right, minus three halves, okay, at that point we get six, but then you take the reciprocal, Okay, you're going to get one over six, right? One over, and then you take this, that's going to put you here. And then the other one's going to be here. Okay. All right, and so these are vertical asymptotes, right? So the function, you're taking the reciprocal, right, of those sine values. So as you get closer, right, so you got to kind of think about this a little bit. As you get closer and closer to this point for a sine, Okay, for our sine function, it's you're, so basically you're getting smaller and smaller. And so when you take the reciprocal of something getting smaller and smaller, it's going to get larger and larger. And so that's what's happening here. And likewise, when you're coming over here, okay, when you're getting closer and closer to this vertical asymptote. Okay. All right. Okay. And so if you, again, so just to clarify what's happening here. Okay, at minus three halves, remember, so when you plug it into here, okay, you're getting, right, for minus three halves, you're gonna get, basically you're getting one here, okay? And so the, co so the cosecant, right, of that is just gonna be one because one over one is one, okay? And then, right, and then you multiply it by six, okay? Right. So it turns out, this always happens for these type of functions that the, the maximums and the minimums for the uh, for the sine function, okay, turn out to be the opposite. What I mean by that is that here's, here's the maximum, right? For again, for sine, okay, and so this turns out to be the minimum for cosecant and this local minimum, relative minimum, okay, for this for this interval. Same thing here, right? You have a relative minimum here, okay, for sine, and so because you're taking the reciprocal. That now becomes a relative maximum for this for this cosecant function. So that's one of the uh, properties um, that you, you'll notice from doing these problems. Okay, all right. So that is basically that is our result. Okay, um, so that's the graph right in pink here. Okay, um, for this function over this given period. Okay, all right. So it's really so the bottom line is that you just really need to know how to. Right, if you know, if you basically just plot the um, sine function for this, and then from there you can come up with a pretty good sketch of what the cosecant function is. Same thing for the other one for um, secant, right? So if, if you have secant of this, then you would graph the cosine counterpart, and then from there just take the reciprocal. Okay. All right. So it's a very again, it goes back to that methodology uh, that we that we discussed in class. So. All right. So this is how I want you to be doing those problems. Okay. Uh, and it's particularly those in 6.2. All right. Okay. So it's a very elegant way uh, to do these problems. Okay. All right. So 
I'm going to stop here. And then if you have any questions, feel free to um, email me.